It is Sunday, September 25th in the MLB, and I'm Austin from Calling Our Shot. And I'm Logan from Calling Our Shot. And we are back with our favorite picks for the MLB. We got two game picks. We got one no one for sitting coming right up. As always, guys, just do us a fa quick favor. Go down and hit that subscribe button if you're watching this video and you aren't subscribed. We are closing in on 39,000 already. You guys have absolutely been killing it in the community. You guys are crushing it. We appreciate that. And yesterday, a solid bounce back day. That's exactly what we want to see. We had a two in one day. And if you took my pick differently, you probably could have had this three and oh sweep. But we had Giants, Diamondbacks, no one for saying cash that one. The Pirates versus Cubs under seven and a half, cash that as well. And then the Marlins and Nationals under three and a half in the first five. Starts off with three runs in the first inning. Don't love that. They end up with four and then they go under the game total in the full game. So either way, pretty solid day. We'll take a little bit of a bounce back. That's what we like to see. Hopefully this Sunday we can make you guys some money we know sundays are so we know i mean you see logan and i sure we know a lot of people are out there we're watching some nfl and if you want to check out our videos we have that week three best bets video which will be linked in the pinned comment and we have that player props and uh, parlays video as well that will be also linked down below so definitely go check that out watch those videos we have one new all-star thomas Mackey. he's rejoining the group we appreciate you thomas thanks for becoming a part of the cos all-star community but logan it's sunday let's get right into it yeah, we're going to a later start time in this one. So it's in your later football window. Uh, we're going to the Cardinals versus Dodgers game, and I'm taking the over nine total runs in this one. Minus 114 on, on DraftKings is your best value here. As Austin's pulling it up right here, really standard across the books. Not You're not going to get any crazy plus value on this one. But we, I really do like it. I mean, look, for first glance, this total seems really high, but it's got to be high for a reason, right? We got Grove starting for the Dodgers, 5.59 ERA and a 2.17 whip at home this year. Those are not great numbers at all. Flirting with the six ERA, over two whip. Grove also, what's encouraging for our over, two home runs allowed in each of his last two starts. Let me tell you right now, St. Louis is seventh in home runs this season. They certainly have the capabilities to, to make Grove you know, pay for missing his spots. That's obviously evidenced by what he's been doing recently. Grove also, five innings pitched and seven strikeouts against Arizona. So you must think to yourself, well, that, that, that must have been a good start. Maybe zero earned runs versus the Dimebacks. No, he still gave up three earned runs because of his dang home run problems. I will never, ever take an under with a pitcher that that is that has a problem giving up home runs, especially not in this spot, because St. Louis definitely knows what to do uh, with bad pitches. St. Louis, seventh in batting average and fourth in OPS on the road. So they're pretty much a top five offense on the road away from Bush Stadium, which you definitely like to see for an over. Now, on the other side, you got Adam Wainwright pitching. And this total seems really high for a Wainwright game. But you know what? Wainwright's one of those classic pitchers that he has good starts and he has really bad starts. I think with this total, the, the books are once again pointing that he might have a bad start. He, look, he had a good start versus the Dodgers first time around. Five and one thirds innings pitched, zero earned earn runs. But you can't just look at the earned runs. Look at his whip, 1.5 whip. Look, that that's that's a whip much much higher than than what uh, the earned runs indicate. And then the final score in that that game for anyone curious, St. Louis won seven to six. So this game soared over back last time Wainwright pitched, even though he pitched well in his start. Look at Wainwright's numbers on the road, 4.44 road ERA and a 1.34 whip on the road for Wainwright. So, I mean, those are those are pretty average numbers. He, he pitches a lot better at home, let, let's put it that way. I think the Dodgers, they have to have, definitely have the bats to make him pay. Dodgers second in batting average and third in OPS at home. You never, ever want to take a Dodgers under. T trust me, they, they just have way too much firepower in that lineup. And the Dodgers hitters have seen Wayne, Wayne Wright before, and they have decent splits, right? Mookie Betts hitting 400 versus M. Freeman, 276. Trey Turner, 400, and, and Justin Turner, 308. So you have several hitters in that lineup that have seen Wayne Wright before. They know all his, his off speed that he's going to throw him. And they, they hopefully will be able to get the extra base hits and turn those into runs for our over. And when these two bullpens come in, I really do think there's some run opportunities late. I've seen each of the bullpens sell uh, plenty of times. So I really do like the over nine in this one. It's ambitious. It's a high number, but it's high for a reason. Austin, what are you going, going for today? So I do like that pick. It's also worth noting that Yadier Molina, not sure if he's going to play. And that's a big thing, you know, for a pitcher who's had the same catcher. I think Molina and Wainwright just set a record for the most ever pitcher and star, uh, catcher combos ever. So an interesting one to kind of watch for. But for my pick, I'm going to take a little bit of page out of your book, Logan, because I'm going back to your pick from yesterday. I'm taking the Pirates and Cubs, I'm taking the under eight. It's currently minus 109 on Barstool. If my computer wants to load, you would see that the odds are uh, are all around the same. We got minus 110 on points bet, minus 115, you know, standard across the book. Now, let's talk about these two pitchers because yesterday from Logan's game, we had to sweat it out because the Pirates scored five runs in the bottom of the fifth inning. But the rest of the game, these two teams combined for one run. So it was just a one bad inning. 
you know, an error or two. It, it was just a brutal beat, but they still got it done for Logan. And you look at who's on the mound for the Cubs. It's going to be Adrian Sampson. He's been pretty solid this year, especially on the road, away from Wrigley Field, where we know the ball can carry out of the stadium. 2.62 ERA, a 1.29 whip on the road. He's been pretty good. And in one start versus the Pirates, seven innings pitch, two earned runs. So he's done pretty well against them. And the Pirates, like Logan talked about yesterday, been a struggling offense over the last two weeks. Just been 202 versus right-handed pitchers, which is what Sampson is third lowest in the MLB. Now on the other side of the mound will be Luis Ortiz, and he's actually making his first career start for the Pirates at home. His first two starts were on the road, and so far, 0.84 ERA, 0.84 whip. Keep that up, that we would love to see that. Hopefully he pitches well, and if he does give up a couple runs, we still have some wiggle room with this being at eight. You look at his two starts. Both on the road, obviously, five and two-thirds innings pitched, zero earned runs versus the Reds, and then five innings pitched and one earned run in Yankee Stadium. So he's pitched pretty well, and hopefully he can come in here and have another pretty good outing in front of the Pirates crowd. Now, Cubs are only hitting 227 versus right-handed pitchers the last two weeks, 13th lowest. So these two offenses haven't been too hot, and when the ERAs, when the bullpens come in, you know they're going to give up some runs like they did yesterday, but I do think they can dial on in. The Cubs bullpen actually hasn't been terrible over the last, you know, 30 games or so, 3.75 ERA. The Pirates, you just have to cross your fingers, close your eyes, and just pray that, you know, the, the Cubs aren't doing anything on the base path, and the Pirates bullpen ERA hasn't been great, but I do think these two teams are capable of going under. It's a Sunday. Who knows what they want to do? They probably want to get home because it's an earlier start, so I like this Pirates-Cubs under eight runs. I think it's got a good chance. Hopefully, the starting pitchers can give us a good head start i'm not going to take the first five under because we see way too many games go over first five under the under full game happened to me yesterday i'm not doing it first five bets are just are, are really weird but as always logan today's actually a big day today is a monumental day now it's not nerfy number 100 but let's get out the music and let's celebrate this will be nerfy number 162 this will be our 107 technically not our 162nd nerfy pick because we've had some canceling in the weather but this is our number 162 and while we are in a 100-win ball club, we are closing in. We're at 97, so I think we'd be making the playoffs, if you ask me. But today we're going to go to the Mariners and Royals, minus 120 on FanDuel. That's our nerfy pick of the day. You can see the DraftKings just makes me laugh every morning. Minus 160. Please don't please don't pay that. Just, just skip or go to a different book. But let's talk about this one because it's the Battle of the Castillos. Max Castillo on the mound for the... Uh, for the Royals here, and he's two and two on no one first innings, but one and zero versus Seattle, and he's also pitched against some tough competition. The your fees he gave up were to the Rays and the Blue Jays, two teams with, that are sometimes annoying and have a lot of firepower at the top of their lineup. He has pitched twice against the Mariners so far this year, seven and one thirds innings pitch, only two earned runs allowed. He technically did allow another two runs, but they were unearned, so I think an error caused those. So I don't really want to pin that on him. And you look at Seattle; they are an annoying team, seventh and first inning runs, and while they've been a little bit better without. Well, it's kind of still scoring runs in the first innings without J-Rod. I still do think Mr. Max Castillo can get it done. Who's the Castillo pitcher for you, Logan? Yeah, we've got Luis Castillo, right? You know, money bags Luis Castillo. Boy, gets gets paid. 18-5 and five on Nerfies this year. So he's he's been pretty solid record-wise. 9-3 and three on the road. Pretty, pretty solid starts there. Kansas City, 21st and first inning runs. We've got a few uh, pretty annoying bats I would like to classify in, in the first in in the top half of the order. If Bobby Witt Jr. gets on base, he's going to steal second. Always what happens. So if, if, if Luis Castillo just, you know, mind the base path, hopefully don't walk anybody, put on free base runners. The over-under set to seven and a half in this one. I think in the battle of the Castillos, the books obviously are not expecting fireworks. Hope we can keep the fireworks out of the first inning. Nerfy Nation go yeah let's fly these flags Luis Castillo also coming off you know not a great start and he normally bounces back like Logan said he just got a big contract extension so shout out to him and Luis Castillo we're gonna need you because Max Castillo he's the top half of the inning we're not worried about him but Luis we need you to lock in buddy as always there's no parlay of the day but there is two videos that are popping up on the screen go click them it's NFL week three go check those videos out we appreciate you guys as always let's get a second straight consecutive winning day and closer to nerfy number 100 and uh, although I hope the Jets and Panthers win, I did pick against the Jets. So get lost, Jets. But I appreciate you guys always tuning in. Logan and Austin, we're signing out.